Welcome to this edition of The Seven. Uh, obviously, there are only six of us here. Hopefully, Kevin Samuels uh, can uh, pull himself away from whatever he's doing. I know that he said he had an appointment that he had to do. Um, Kevin Samuels is definitely a busy guy lately. He just cracked 100,000 subscribers, so congratulations uh, to him. Um, he actually, we, we were talking a few weeks back, and he said, well, you're going to be the first to crack 100,000 subscribers. Kevin passed me right on by, so congratulations to him. Uh, very, very happy for him. Kevin's been at this for years. He works hard, clean image. So uh, congrats to him, man. And 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 like I said, when one of us wins, we all win. So I think I speak for everybody on the panel when we say congratulations to Kevin Samuels for reaching the ever elusive 100,000 subscriber mark. Let's get this party started. Let us introduce today's panel. First up, of course, the ordained minister of the streets of Chi-Town, Southside Chicago, Minister Trapp. What's going on, brother? Hey, man, what's good, man? I'm glad to be here, man. Church, man. You know it. You know it. Next up, the Snow Bunny Slayer up there in Minneapolis, Minnesota. <laughs> and the man responsible for finding the three models who will be filming Womanese Volume 3 in roughly six weeks. Yes, the Snow Bunny Slayer as well as the Snow Bunny Radar Finder, Solo TV 84. What's going on, brother? Hey, man. Glad to be here. You know what I'm saying? Still part of the seven. Just had some family issues the last couple of weeks as well as work, but... Glad to be here. All drama aside, let's have a fantastic show. Let's go. Let's do it, man. Next up is the man in Texas with the Texas two steps still chilling in his game room, which he swears up and down is the green screen, but I don't buy it because <laughs> yeah. that ceiling fan looks really, really real. Steve the Dean Williams. No, what's going on to the chat room dogs out there? The family of the motherfucking six or the seven without Kevin, but I'm here to be here with my dogs and my family, man. My other family. I appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate that, Steve. Next up, the fittest man on the panel. Of course, Myron, 3% body fat gains. He loses a percentage of body fat just about every week. What's going on, brother? What's up, man? What's up? Hey, I, I'm going to join. I'm going to get a model two for you, bro. I'm not going to lose the solo. I got I'm the final. <laughs> <laughs> like, solo, I get McCoy now. <laughs> yeah, check this out. Solo got me two redheads and a blonde, man. Like, like what's up? All right, I'm going to get you a Latina then, bro. I got you. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Certainly not least, the man of Manhattan. We call him Batman every once in a while. <laughs> Superman that, of course, is Mr. Locario. What up? What up? What's going on, people? What's popping? I'm excited to, uh, you know, spit this game. Let's get it. Let's get it. Good shit, man. Um, I'm not going to say it out loud, but I know a lot of you are thinking that we're probably going to talk about a certain thing. We're not. We're going to talk about what we want to talk about. Nope. Eh, it's out whatever the case may be. Let me remind you guys that when you support one of us, you support all of us. So if you super chat one of us, you super <clears> chat <throat> all of us. We split these super chats evenly. So we, we thank you in advance for your support. So today's topic has to do with Tony Braxton. Tony Braxton uh, recently did an interview. I'm going to share my screen here. <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, with you guys. And I'm going to read part of this and I'm going to have, I'm going to have everyone sort of comment on it. And I know it's a little bit hard to read, because the writing is so small. Let me see if I can blow this up a little. No, that's not really making much of a difference. Let's go to the other side and give it a shot. Hang on a second. Oh, oh, oh look at that. Oh, oh, look at that. Okay, very good. Oh, Excellent. Man. Very good. So Tony Braxton says, quote, I regret not having more sex when I was younger. The article is written by James McMahon. Uh, says the singer 52 on discovering her talent meeting Stevie Wonder and the downside of her religious upbringing Listen, I think I speak for everybody here the, that says uh, when I say Tony Braxton looks damn good for 52. I mean, can I get an amen? Yeah, I'll give it that. I'll give oh, it yeah. that. You know, I mean, I'm oh, not. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I'm sure we would all smash. So let me just read the first uh, paragraph, then I'll go around the room and we'll see, we'll see what's, uh, what's going on now. Um, it says, quote, I wouldn't say I was religious, but I am spiritual. I believe in a greater force. When I was seven, my family became very religious. We were Jehovah's Witnesses. We were oh. wow. Okay, didn't see that coming. We were Catholic. We, we tried everything before settling on United Methodist. I asked my mom once, didn't know she talked like that. They were searching for, she just replied, it was the 70s. The 70s were a very religious era. I think a lot of people were looking for the right path. I didn't realize she continued. I could sing until my teenage years. Singing was so much a part of me and my family. We got up, we sang, we went to bed. Devin, please stop sending me messages on uh, Slack because everybody can see them. Thank you. Um, we got up, we sang, we went to bed. I think at elementary school, I realized I had a different tone. Devin, stop. Dude, hey, Dev, listen to the goddamn show. <laughs> Dude, I love her. I love her to death, but goddamn it. Listen, woman, 
<laughs> I think in elementary school, I realized I had a different tone. My voice was always low. I remember everyone in class singing Joy to the World, and I was the only one who couldn't sing it in the key. I was always the kid in the room with the low voice that made you turn around. Nobody believes how I was discovered. They think it's a story for publicity, but it's absolutely true. I was in college, and one day I was at a gas station singing to myself while I filled up my car. The attendant, William E. Petaway Jr., writer, blah, 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 comes up to me and tells me he likes my voice and that he'd like to do some demos with me. I thought it was just a line, but I went with it, and here I am. He went on to buy gas at the gas station. I regret, she says, not having more sex when I was younger. I should have drank more. I should have partied more, smoked more even. I think my religious upbringing stopped me doing a lot of things that I should have done. It's it's not a good look at the age I am now. The way it works is you do that stuff in your 20s and 30s, and then in your 40s, you've earned enough to pay for the therapy. Let me just go ahead and stop it right there. And again, and again think about what this woman just said. She just sat here and said that I regret not being a hoe. What you're supposed to do, she said, you're supposed to be a hoe in your 20s and 30s, then when you're in your 40s, you make enough money to pay for therapy. There's nothing in there about having a man. And we wonder why, and we wonder why sisters and women like Tony Braxton are alone. Jeff, I'm going to kick it to you first, man, because it's been a while since you've been on the panel. What are your initial thoughts on what you just heard from Tony Braxton? Before you read the article, in my mind, I was like, when you said religious, I'm like, that bitch probably a Jehovah's Witness. And then, boom, you said it, Jehovah's Witness. And it reminded me of when I was in high school, and I was the only motherfucker that caught on to it that Jehovah's Witnesses were the biggest fucking freaks on the low. Like, these bitches were the first bitches in <laughs> high school. They were doing, they, they were sucking dick and doing anal to save their pussy for yep. marriage. That's what type of shit that they were doing. <laughs> um, and I don't know if you know about Jehovah's Witnesses, but this is one crazy religion. Like they really, they really are very strict. And they're like, like when you, if you get caught doing some shit, when you go to the kingdom hall, they will call you out on the mic. Sister Tony Braxton has been caught fornicating in the, in the public washroom. You oh. are disfellowship and they have a section where they sit all of the bitches in disfellowship nobody can talk to them for like a month none of their family members even when they get home they can't be talked to or anything for a month they, they kind of just shove their food into <laughs> underground like like in a uh, like I like got a prison and just throw it in the ground and they just yeah. eat and they get talked to by brothers and sisters of nobody right so that's the type of fear that they was living in now this whole remorse um, that she's having, she, she. I mean, she, the whole regret. This is the the biggest reason why a lot of these women ended up single mothers because of this strategy of women like her telling younger girls, "Get it out your system while you're young." Mm. And when they when they do that whole shit when they're young, when they get older, they're gonna pay for it. So I mean, Tony Braxton missed out on probably a lot of parties. Missed out on a lot of shit, but right now you see it the way social media is, the way uh, uh, the entertainment game is right now. Hoes are winning, and she can't cash in on that. Her sister is one of those hoes. Oh, yeah. Her, her, her other sisters, they're loud, rambunctious. Tony Braxton is always reserved, and it didn't pay off for her. You know, so she's looking to cash. Well, she's mad that she can't cash in now that she's old because the older a woman gets, the less value they're going to have. So no, there's no value left on her pussy. She let all the good years pass by where all the NBA players could have been, you know, taking on trips and shit like that. She wanted to try different drugs and she can't do it now. So real, like she said, it's a bad look. And, you know, unfortunately, a 52 year old bitch cannot go to the club and, and get the sparklers. You know what I'm saying? She <laughs> wants that life. And she oh is God. telling the younger generation of women. Get it now while you're young. Use what you got to get what you want. You're not going to have that body forever. Do it while you're young, and we'll see you when you're old, my age, and we can hopefully get you together, man. But Jehovah's Witnesses, the biggest freaks. Lucario, what are your thoughts on this opening paragraph here with uh, Ms. Tony Braxton? Man, well, this is the thing. I, I, I think 
I don't think she's fully telling the truth though, because uh, I think that no. she is. I think she's done stuff, a lot of stuff in the past. But like what most women do is they try to paint a picture like they didn't. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So that they can look like they're innocent, but now she's trying to make herself look edgy also at the same time. So she's getting the best of both worlds. She's like, I can act like I wasn't that type of woman. And now because, you know, it's a little bit more, um, I would say like accepted for women to be more sexual, like outright. Now it's like, oh, well, I, I wish I was doing this, a lot of this sexual stuff because it's trendy to, you know, you be there. the quote unquote thought. You feel what I'm saying? Listen, let me stop you right there. I'm, I'm gonna and I'm gonna let you continue. So this right. parlays exactly into what we're talking about here. So let's go down a list of men because listen, Tony Braxton did exactly what Lucario said. She's trying to right. snow. Oh, I wish I had slept around. I wish I had. Okay, well check this out. She has dated Birdman. She's dated Eddie Murphy. She's dated Carrie Lewis. She's dated. I remember when she dated Curtis Martin. Curtis mm -hmm. Martin was still with the New England Patriots. When he dated her, as a matter of fact, I think he might have been in one of her music videos. And he was right. a thief too in his prime. Yes, he was. Uh, and by the way, he's a Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. Yep. Back, uh, uh, dude, Jim Jackson, Jason Kidd, Shamar Moore, Bryant Reed. Like, dude, Frankie Beverly. Like, like whoa, Frankie Beverly. <laughs> Frankie Beverly. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, she's trying to act like she ain't been ran through. But uh, what I'm seeing here is years active, uh, 1989 to the present. Spouses. Uh, Carrie Lewis married in 2001, divorced 2013. Uh, she's got two kids. Where, where are those two kids from, right? So mm -hmm. I wish I had had more sex, yet you've been ran through by NBA niggas, right? Mm -hmm. You've been ran through by NFL niggas and got two, at least two illegitimate kids. So, Lucario, based on what you just saw, mm -hmm. this, this literally this literally says exactly what you said. Jesus. Right, and this and this is all, and this is, and these are just the people that we know of. You know what I'm right. saying? So, right. so you know, and and you got to understand, women are always gonna not count certain things. Like she probably gave head to some dude, right? You know, here and there. Uh, right. You know, she she had sex with some guy for like five minutes, and she don't count those things. So there's a lot of stuff that's happening, but she wants to again paint the picture that it's it's not really happening. You understand? Or what could have happened is is that she in her mind felt feels like she didn't do enough you feel what i'm saying so she's like yeah i had all this sex but i wish i had more you, you understand which most women want anyway that's that's the that's the thing you gotta understand is that most women want to have as much sex as they're having but even more than they probably have had because understand that women can't women uh they don't feel comfortable being sexual uh you know just outwardly so they're always trying to pretend they're not and 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 you know Hold it back. You feel what I'm saying? I see. I see what you're saying, man. So, Solo, what are your thoughts on what Lucario and Jap just said? Finally, Lucario says something, uh, or he didn't say something I was going to say. So, <laughs> thank you, Lucario. Uh, no, both guys are spot on. And to go back to what Jap is saying, what happens is these women nowadays, Donovan, have so much more freedom compared to prior generations of women, right? Where now, what Tony Braxton basically is seeing is like Jap is saying that these these holes are winning, and not only that, but they're making money off their thoughtery. Okay, yeah. yes. So a lot of older women or from prior gener generation, they see that and they're like, "Damn, these young girls have all this freedom; they can do whatever they want." We didn't get to indulge in that because we had to carry ourselves a certain type of way. And now you got women. I just interviewed a chick who uh, does OnlyFans. And she's almost making 10 bands a month. And the girl, I asked her to rate herself. And she's like, well, I know a lot of guys would give me a 10, but I give myself a six. Yeah. So she got the Donovan, and look, if I went on OnlyFans, I'd probably be lucky if I had two gay guys following me. Pause. You know, I just got to keep it 100. But number two also, wasn't Tony Braxton dating or messing with Jason Kidd yes. and Jimmy Jackson at the same time? Yeah. Now, both of you. And you want something solo? Listen, they they had because they played on the same team. Like trades are created because of women. So for Tony Braxton to sit here and say I should have had more sex, to me that's bullshit. She was a hoe just like everybody else. Yeah, and and here's the thing: at that time, it was uh, Jimmy Jackson, Jason Kidd, Jamal Ma Mashburn. Yeah, if those guys would have played together for a few years. They could have probably made a run for the championship in the late '90s, early 2000s. But guess what? They had to trade Jimmy Jackson because. The locker room got so divided and toxic because of the fact that those men, rich millionaires, let 
Tony Braxton, the woman, get in that way. And so all this stuff Shorty's talking about is for the birds. She's been thoughting. She's been doing that. But I think what she's regretting is she wasn't able to monetize off of it. Yep. Like these young chicks. And also, like Lucario is saying, she probably wishes she could have done more. She probably does. Uh, now, Steve, you have a more traditional view Oh fuck! Of, of this of this kind of thing, right? So if Tony Braxton, let, let's say that you're let, let's say you're 84 year old Steve, right? And your 52 year old daughter Tony Braxton says, "You know, Daddy, I wish I had had more sex. I wish that I would have smoked more. I wish I would have partied more." What would you say to her? Well, I wouldn't give a fuck because she's not my. I mean, she's my daughter, but when she gets old enough, I can't control what the fuck she do. Okay. But well, I, I want to agree with Jap and all the fellas on there. See, I I, I, I want to break this down to the guys. You know, young girls at a young age will, they've always taken it in the ass, especially when they're uh, uh, in about the church and all that, because they want to say their virginity. So they will either take it in the ass or in the mouth and things like that, then, and then the pussy, because they want to hold that for as long as they possibly can until they get into the real world. See, what people don't understand is there used to be a time where girls or women only mess with people in either their neighborhood a little bit outside their neighborhood and maybe uh -huh. a little bit outside the city until this thing called the World Wide Web hit. That's right. Once that hit, that opened the doors to give her access to any guy that was connected to the internet. And see what Tony Braxton is, she's 52 years old. She's feeling her age because she's feeling the, the young chicks nipping at her bud. You know, that's part of the problem that she's feeling right here. But what a lot of guys don't understand why they do this is because if you look at women, remember, dad is on her ass. Mom is telling her she can't do this. She can't do that. Oh, God, the church and all this other stuff. So when she gets her ass out of dad's house, OK, and remember, high school dick, there's a difference between uh -huh. high school dick and being addicted to big man dick. OK, and what <laughs> happened was. She was so used in high school, you know, kissing, a little peck, a little lick on her nipples, maybe spit. They probably even eat the pussy. They just probably just, just, just stuck it in or whatever they did, right? So when she got out into the real world, she started to recognize the addiction of sex and how great it was with older men that was pinning her knees back to her shoulders and blowing her motherfucking back out. And, and that became an addiction. See, a lot of women don't want to agree to that or, or, or um, not agree, but they don't want to accept that. You know what? Once it's like it's like a person take, it's just smoking weed all day or or just smoking a vape pen. And then all of a sudden they get this thing called cocaine or something in the uh -oh. form of dick, right? Oh, and they and, and they get it and sniff that shit and they and they they get the high that they don't get from masturbating. They 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 like, oh my god, my sexuality. I mean, I get to learn more about what I like and I get to be, be freaky. I don't have to worry about dad or mom. I don't have to worry about anybody judging me. And I'll keep my numbers on the low, even though they're high. I'll lie about those. But what's going on with these women is like Tony Braxton. She just like all the women coming out. I always say every year you just breathe it in. There's a new, there's new elks and zebras and, and little piglets running around that are legal pussy that are looking to get their <laughs> back blown out to get addicted to dick. And that's what's happening to her. She, like y'all guys said, she's already fucking. It's like Lucario saying that some other guy said, she's just telling you about the people. See, y'all know about the people that she wants you to know about. You, that's right. you don't know about the motherfuckers between Monday at midnight, the Jap rolling in on Monday, Lucario rolling in on Wednesday, <laughs> Solo rolling in on Thursday, Donovan and me doing a tag team on Sunday. Yes, she ain't talking about that shit, fam. <laughs> <laughs> listen, Steve, listen, Steve, Steve broke it down perfectly, man. These women, like every woman is a hoe. And Myron, uh, there was something um, that Myron said and it, it was either it was either Myron or somebody else, but he, but but he said every woman is a hoe if you catch her on the right day. So Myron, I'm gonna come I'm gonna come to you with this. What are your thoughts on Tony Braxton? Because she appears to be snowflaking, and it's just like you always say, women sell purity even when they're fifty fucking yeah. years old, man. Exactly, and, and man, I hate going forth because all the guys before me were speaking 100 percent facts, man. <laughs> But I'll, I'll say this, bro. The reality is this, guys. This is why red pill awareness is so important in 2020 because the reality is this, guys. She belongs to the streets. Unless yes, proven otherwise, bro. And the thing is this. So there's a two-pronged issue here. Number one, what the thing is this. She is was definitely promiscuous before. She's going to sit here and lie and say, oh, no, I wish I had more sex. What she really means is I wish when I was being promiscuous back then, I wasn't held accountable the way women are now. 
Because the thing is this, as time has passed and, you know, the world has become se- globalized and the sexual marketplace has become globalized and feminism has gotten stronger, it's acceptable now for women to be promiscuous. It's completely acceptable. No one, as a matter of women are actually monetizing it, like, he, he, on huge numbers like there's a bunch of girls on only fans making 10 20 50 thousand dollars a month that aren't even that attractive but they're monetizing their looks so what she's really saying is i wish i was able to be promiscuous back then and not be held accountable because back then they yeah. had to kind of creep with that type of thing they had to they they had to hide that promiscuity they couldn't be open about their sexuality it wasn't really until about the 90s when little kim made it cool to be doing this type of thing yes. then we started to follow then cardi b came then Nicki minaj and all these girls and now if you meet chicks, because I'm here in Miami, guys. I'm dealing with these girls all day. They look at these women as role models. You meet like any bad 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 year old. They're all, you know, following what the rappers say. They're getting the, the same tattoos in the same areas, whatever it may be. So it is completely socially acceptable for women to be promiscuous nowadays. Now, with this woman, the thing is that she's 52 years old. So she completely understands her role in the marketplace now. And she understands that her value has deteriorated. Now, yeah. compound the problem. She's also wealthy and famous. So her market of suitable men is like literally half a percent. If oh, that. Easy. So what does she have to do? She's got to sell purity to get some type of commitment from a guy of high value. Because the thing is, I always say it, man. Women are dealers of purity. Guys are dealers of success. That's right. how it is. So guys are selling success. Girls are selling purity. So the way for a woman to lock you down automatically, what she's going to say, like innately, she doesn't even understand. Like she doesn't even know, but women know like deep down that like, if they're not pure, they can't sell that purity. They're going to have a very tough time getting commitment from a man of value. They just know it. So this is why girls keep stuff on the low. So what she's doing is she's basically doing some reverse psychology. Everybody knows she was getting down back in the day. (laughs) You know, she just moved silently like lasagna. You know what I'm saying? That's the silent. You know, that's, that's how she was doing it. So, now she's trying to sell that purity on a, a big magazine platform like uh, this this article, and she's trying to get some guy to you know to oh yeah you know whatever idealize we, wow. we blue pill guys think of it that yeah. way yeah because like blue pill guys that aren't aware of how the sexual marketplace really works they're gonna read that and be like oh my god yeah you know what she was a good girl let me commit to her now and it's like ha ha gotcha you know what I'm Myron, saying so, Myron is on to something and I didn't even think about this until he said it Tony Braxton is this is her cry for help. This yeah. is her advertising herself. Hey, look at me. Even though I'm at advanced age at 52, I was a good girl, even though I have two illegitimate kids and <laughs> fucking niggas in the NBA and artists. And the, right. That, NFL too. That, dude, dude the, and the NFL too. Tony Braxton is trying. Dude, she's shooting her shot. Is what she's yeah. doing. Facts. She's, she, and she knows. She knows that the only way she's going to be able to get a guy like at this point, because she's 52 now, so she knows the game. She knows how high value guys operate, whatever. High value dudes are definitely not going to commit to a chick that's been ran through. So what's she going to do? She's going to sell that purity, baby. She's going to sell that purity. I wasn't like that, blah, 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 all that stuff. And fortunately for her, back in the day, she probably was moving silently because back, you know, you would get shamed to, to hell 20 years ago, 30 years ago for being a hoe. So, but nowadays it's acceptable. So what she really means is I wish I was able to move the way I did before openly without being judged for it so now she's trying to sell that purity so that's how i think she, why she's doing it you know she can't beat up on her too bad though we gotta give her a prop she kept her body together you know yeah. Yeah, i mean like she is listen a whole Chevy. Chevy. Check, it. check it out Look it. ain't nobody wifing up a 52 year old with two kids they're just not gonna do it, fam. Two adults, yeah. right about now. Yeah. <laughs> Two 30 year olds. This. And this. the thing is, any girl that like makes money or is like successful, this is why we got Tommy Laren running around like crying about not being able to get guys. Because like when yeah. a woman reaches a certain level of financially and soci- socioeconomically, she can no longer women can't date down like we can. They just can't. They're incapable of doing it. They might fuck down like once or twice, but they ain't gonna be seen in public with you or take you seriously. So for women like that are successful, their pool of suitable candidates is like literally like that small. But the problem is all the guys they're chasing after don't give a fuck. They'll date down. You know what I'm saying? Like rappers will bang groupies all day. You know what I'm saying? So that's why they take L's, a lot of famous chicks. All right, let me, uh, I'm going to get to the super chats here. Uh, Merciless Six, $5 says the Magnificent Seven is back. Church in session. Congrats, Kev. You're up there with Coach Greg. Cannoli76 with a $5 super chat. We're going to come back to this question and answer it next. He says, how about women that don't regret the lost time but try to make it all up before they lose all their opportunities? We will come back to that. Greg McGrath, $10, says all professional women are like this uh, as their professional drive leaves them like Braxton. This is why this nurse tag surgeon 
with no game. Listen, all women are hypergamous. I think we I think we know that. Theo WAF, thank you for becoming a member. Thanks for the support. Freelance Ronan says she was getting that taxi cab mileage. <laughs> Greg McGrath, another $10, says, had a girl ask why I don't buy her a necklace she wanted. I told her that's why she has a husband. Wow. Okay. Shane Cooks and Travels uh, became a new member. I appreciate the support there. Um, there was another one. Ah, Merciless Six, uh, $5, says, if Tony didn't thought it up in the past, I'm sure she'd change her story and regret it, wishing she would have settled down by her 30s at least. Chris Von Eric with the, with the $10 super chat says, for Tony rehearsal sex doesn't count. So let's go back to the let's go back to this question a little bit earlier. This is a very interesting question. I want to start with Lucario uh with this question. This he so so his question is this is Canoli says how about the women that don't regret the lost time but try to make it up before they lose all their opportunities. In other words, women who women who were kind of good girls ish but then they become hoes later on in life. What are your thoughts on that? Right. Well, the thing is, listen, there's no there's no such thing as good girls, man. I'm trying to tell you guys, listen, they only there's probably like a small percent, like less than one percent of women who aren't fucking and sucking. You understand? Like 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 they're, it's just that's a myth that there's women like that. But let's just go with that. Let's just go with that. That myth of women who right. they weren't doing stuff, but now they want to make up for lost time. My thing is, I'm I'm up, I'm all for it. You understand what I'm saying? I like when I like chicks being uh whores and sluts and all that i love it the, the the only thing i don't like is the women like tony braxton who pretend <laughs> they were not like that and like myron is saying trying to sell the purity i don't i don't like the selling the purity thing because if you try to sell purity to me what happens is that you're trying to run game on me and yeah. you're insulting me you understand what i'm saying because you only run that type of game on dudes that you think are betas and don't right. know anybody right. you see what i'm saying so i if you're if you're promiscuous like you you naturally are just be that and 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 do that with me you understand what i'm saying but the thing is is that there, there's a lot of women who they're you know the, the women who say they're going to make up for lost time because look a, a chick let's say she she smashed like 35 40 dudes back in the day so her that's not she's thinking well that's not a lot i want to do like 100 you understand so now she's trying to get it in so if she's trying to do that i'm cool with that just be uh, the whole, you understand? Don't pretend you're not that. That's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. Well, Cario, speaking of fact, what are, your thoughts, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, yo, I'll keep it real with you guys. Like, anytime a girl tries to sell you purity on some BS, like, you should take offense to it because right. the th thing is this, like, she, she's telling you that because she probably doesn't see you as her best option. Like, yo, you got to look at it like this. I hate to use this reference every time, but you got to think of it like this. If I was future a Drake, would she be saying this BS? Nope. No, then you can't be stupid and you got to make the move. You know what I'm saying? Or if, she ain't gonna, if she's not going to cooperate, you kick her out your place, man. Or you like you make her feel stupid. Like you, you immediately retract attention because mm. the thing is, is that like girls are always going to try to sell purity, man. If they see like if they see like any type of like bitch in you or whatever it may be, they're going to sell purity. So you you got to like quickly like nip that in the butt. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, is that women size you up like as soon as they meet you and they deal with you they, they put you in a category oh i could fleece this guy oh this guy right. just he's yeah. not aware they know off rip so they're going to put you in that category and then they're going to basically deal with you however they see you based on the way you convey yourself to the woman you know what i mean so yeah you, you should take offense if she's trying to sell you purity man because these girls especially nowadays man yo i've always said it back in 2008 there was a study done and we knew back then that an average 20 year old chick was having sex way more than the average 21 year old guy of mm. course I, I am literally willing to bet my left testicle. <laughs> the left testicle. The left testicle. The left one, bro. I'm willing to bet my left nut that if you take an average 21-year-old girl now, an average 21-year-old guy, she's doubling or tripling the notch count of an average guy, bro. With, Easy. With, with seeking arrangement, with online dating, with Instagram, with like, you know, the world, how the world is basically shrunk and women have access to high-value men all day. Bro, I, like, I'll tell you this. There's a couple bad chicks that I've dated. Uh, just out of curiosity, I'm like, yo, let me see your IG, like your DMs. Man, blue check, blue check, blue check, NFL, NBA, like celebrity. Like, I'm just like, yo, like that right there wakes you up, like to see. And so many guys are wondering, why can't I get laid? Why can't I get women? Guys, literally, like, if you're dealing with a chick that's a seven, she is literally talking to the top 1% of men at any given time. That's why you got to be on your P's and Q's with these chicks, man. And they're out there getting it in, man. So don't let them sell, sell you this purity, bro. They're, they're, girls are having way more sex in 20 than men are. That's a fact. 
Real talk, man. Uh, before I get to, uh, hold on a second. Uh, so Solo, you're up next. Um, Tom A with the $5 super chat. He says, women rarely move laterally and never do a three-step drop under center. She's like a running back, big stars who get banged up and have short careers. Wow, very good analogy. So Solo, what are your thoughts on women trying to make up for lost time? I, I, I really was a good girl, and this is less than one half of 1%. But I, uh, you know, I'm 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 trying to be a hoe in my 30s and 40s. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, Donovan. I mean, we see this happening all the time, right? Where women get divorced, who were married younger, um, you know, in their teenage years or 20s, then they get divorced in their 30s or 40s, and then they're out there riding the car carousel again, right? Right. So what happens is, especially with women that were married young, they feel like, oh, I missed out on all of this, and I want to really experience the world and. So they go out there and then they indulge in in the nightlife. Uh, they deal with Donovan Sharp back when he was in, uh, you know, Las Vegas with those coattails or yes, Solo TV 84 back, you know, a couple of years ago in, in the secret house parties, all of that. You know what I'm saying? So you have a lot of these women, once they get older, then they think that this is the wave, this is the way to do it. And so they want to make up on last time. That That's simply what that is. Hey, Lucario. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. No, I already went to Lucario. Up next is Steve. Sorry about that. I got a little bit. Steve, what yeah, are we, your... We look alike. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so I, I, I'm a, I, as always, and that's what I love about this show, we have different opinions. And I'm going to punch a lot of people in the thing. I think uh -oh. a lot of people are pissed off that these women are whores, but they're not being whores for them. A lot mm. of these motherfuckers are mad that you know, these women are experiencing their sexuality, their bodies, and they're sucking a lot of dick, which they have every right to. I'm not here to tell a woman what she should do with her body. But I think a lot of guys are mad that these guys are not reaping the benefits. Now, Myra was saying that if you're if you're a seven or whatever like that, I'm like, fuck that. As If you're a man, you're going to get the benefits, period. Because I don't care how many OnlyFans accounts she has, there is some guy she's doing shit for free for. I don't care how many guys she's followed, got followers. She's buying somebody watches, clothes, jewelry, paying his rent, buying him video games, buying him flat screen TVs and all that other stuff. So like Lucario saying, man, I don't mind a woman like, like Lucario saying, Tony, I got a problem because she lies. She's lying about what she's doing. But I have no problem because like everybody's saying, these women are exploring their bodies and they love sex. It's just the problem is they're choosing who they fuck bases where where these guys are bending over backwards trying to kiss their ass to get pussy yeah we know these women are women are whores but guess what is she gonna be a whore to me right. instead of instead of being a whore to somebody else with my ring my money and living yeah. under my house unbelievable um that's a very good question jap what are your thoughts on old hoes trying to make up for lost time well again like what the brothers was telling especially what steve said i said this all the time a lot of bitches make you do all the work for another <laughs> man to receive the benefits and the jackpot. <laughs> and um, like it's a lot of guys right. that's whining and dining, but it's another guy that she really likes <laughs> that, that he comes over with a wife beater, a chicken dinner, two grape swishers, <laughs> a Fanta, and she busts it wide open. But man, you, she wants, she, cause, well, she, she sees the simp in you. So what she wants you to do is take her to uh, Del Frisco's, take her to Benny Hanna's, do a rooftop party. Let's do a wine tasting. You're doing all this shit, and she's fucking a nigga named fucking Rodney. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> On the side, and now you look like a fool when you find out about it. But another thing I want to talk about with, with Tony Braxton, a lot of y'all haven't noticed, is Tony Braxton didn't cash in, and she tried to marry Birdman. Mm -hmm. She did. Ooh. They were engaged. They were engaged, and he bought he he and he did some sipping too. I mean, you know, he started investing in his old ass property. So he bought a Bentiaga Bentley truck. Wow, Jesus! He lost his ring <laughs> allegedly. You know what I'm saying? That nigga spent probably a million dollars on a diamond ring for her. she, wow. and she said she lost it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. she was on Wendy Williams with the rest of these old tea sipping assholes <laughs> talking about what they were and what they're not right now. And this is, I love it. Watching old hoes lose is what I like. 
I have aunties like this that think they have more knowledge than me about this. Oh my God. These are the same old motherfuckers who have. I don't know if you ever been to a shitty old older wedding. <laughs> But motherfuckers got pans of chicken, pans of motherfucking uh, uh, green beans, cornbread, shit like that. And they in a little banquet hall, a shitty ass 53 year old walking down the aisle, you know what I'm saying, with another motherfucker. And they not dressed, the, uh, the brides, the grooms, and everybody, everybody got on different suits, every different color. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of shit that happens when these hoes get old. You know what I'm saying? So I love it. I love it. You didn't cash in on your golden years. Now you old bitch out of here and you're trying to find your way, you're trying to, you know, ill advise the young bitches so they can end up like you. Uh, Solo, did I skip you? No, nah, no, nah, you, you did me, bro. You did oh, me. I was because for whatever reason, oh. I couldn't remember what your, uh, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't remember what the, uh, what, what your, what, what the thunder was. Let, let, let's get to these super chats. Yeah, I think Jap is definitely in the lead for the, yeah, yeah. Tonight. Oh, old hoes is my specialty. <laughs> old hoes. Uh, old young. That's true. At Steve the Dean. Appreciate that. Zenatos Clutch, $5. Says Steve just touched the third rail and opened the fourth wall. Be the guy they choose, or at least one of the carousels they ride. Real talk. Ralph E. Shout out to Clutch. Yes, sir, man. Uh, Snowbody Sundays. Uh, every Sunday at what time? Uh, nine, nine. Eight nine um, CST time, but not tonight. <laughs> Eight ish nine ish CST time. Yeah. Ralph, five dollars uh, says when when women say she's only been with three men, she means relationships only. She never counts her flings. This is to sell her quote unquote purity to cash in. That's the comment of the night. When women and, and again, women are very very uh, 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 they're they, they are acutely aware of the linguistics of what they say. They say, and as Jap shows, uh, the now 78-year-old Jasmine guy who used to be fine at Whitley, that bitch hit the wall, and it is a different world from that hoe. Um, <laughs> women know, when you ask them, how many guys are you like that? A, a lot of women, well, how many guys have you been with? Automatically, well, I've been with five guys. This is, And you should never ask how many women, uh, how many men a woman has fucked because she's never going to tell you the truth. But when you ask, right. ask that question, just like, just like Ralphie said, the, the number she gives you, that's the number of relationships she's been in. Very, very good. Uh, Freelance Ronan, $5, says Steve the Dean with the yeah mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Dominic Ramos with the $10 uh, with the ten dollar super sticker, I want to read the. Oh, I'm sorry, Steve. You had one. Uh, you had yeah, something else yeah just one thing, real quick. The only one who was ever honest about her sex partners on a on a movie was Angelina Jolie and Mr. And Mrs. Smith. They were in a car. Brad said he fucked like 50, 60 motherfuckers, and Jolie said I fucked two hundred thirty eight, wow. and she said some two at a time. But the, wow. what guys gotta Ooh. understand is that this is because after thirty, when they pussy get to look like chewed up meat. It oh, becomes okay. hunting season where they start to hunt the suckers. That's why, like Jap saying with the, with the church where he was funny as fuck, where he was saying about the old lady in the in the church with that gump <laughs> motherfucker, because that's when they begin to hunt the weak motherfuckers for security. Plus, that's, that's, it, like, uh, that's just like um, Janet Jackson and Jermaine Dupri. Yeah, they, Janet Jackson was was literally. Uh, uh, praying on Jermaine Dupri, and she got him because Jermaine Dupri had a crush on her since he was a little kid, and he finally got his dreams finally came true as an older man. But I mean, even that was short lived. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it was. Yeah. Uh, Solo, you said you had something to add to this. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes to what Steve and Jap are saying, right? And it, it, it'll be some guy uh, who. When she hit the wall and she's got like three kids and it's 300 pounds, they'll be bragging about how bad she is when she's out of her prime. You know what I'm saying? So you have a lot of dudes that are, uh, they didn't, never got the girl when she was in her prime. You know, the high school. Yeah, the high school. <laughs> that everybody in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the community is talking about, right? Uh, the high school Keisha. Well, now Keisha has ran through and washed up. And now you got some sucker or simp playing daddy with her and trying to play house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh myron what you got on this man yeah no no uh, steve brought up a good point man the reality is this like some girls will will reject you because they know they can't manipulate you and what i mean by that i'll give, I'll give you guys an example so like I, I i met this chick on hinge right and we were talking had the date lined up it was good to, good to go and my dumb ass got greedy bro i ain't gonna lie i got greedy i was like hey 
Check out my YouTube. <laughs> sub, like, and subscribe. <laughs> sub, like, and comment, right? She goes and looks, and on the, my thing, it says, how to get girls. So she starts going through my content, and she sends me a thing like, oh, I don't think we'll be compatible for later. Your oh, yes. content is whatever. Like, I don't think we'll be, we'll, we'll be a match. How old is this chick? She's like 28 years old. She's on the brink. She's looking for something serious. She's on Hinge. She sees me. She's like, okay, this guy's a player. He has different girls in his videos, blah, blah, blah. And she knows, okay, I can't manipulate this guy. There I'm, is. I'm just not going to go on a date with him. So, you know, I, I'm, I took an L on that one. It is what it is. But the point of the matter is that, like, women will 100%, like, when they're at a certain age or a certain time in their life, they're going to look, like, just like Steve was saying, they're in predator mode. They're like, okay, I yeah. need to take advantage of a guy that doesn't know any better. Shout out to Roald Tomas. He talks about this all the time, where – a woman's biggest, uh, like basically like her biggest weakness is a guy who knows his worth. That's right. And if you know your worth and you know that what you can actually, what you bring to the sexual marketplace is a high value guy, women can't manipulate you. And that is literally like, and, and let's face it, like a lot of girls, th that's how they get over on guys. You know, they manipulate, they sell the purity, they sell the femininity, blah, 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 bye, bye, bye. And then your dumb ass goes down the aisle. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then the next thing you know, you're getting divorce rape. So there's nothing more powerful than a guy that understands his value. And when women see that in you, they're immediately going to, a lot of them will leave you. Just they'll reject you off that. You know what I'm saying? Cause they know they can't take advantage of you. This works a lot on dating apps. A lot of women will put in their dating app profile. If you can't handle my curves, then don't even talk to me. They are Please. circumventing the, they, they are preemptively circumventing the rejection because women do not handle rejection. Well, guess what? Right. They, guess what else they don't handle? Well, a man, they can't manipulate. Yep. And, Listen, this is something they need, not necessarily something they want. Uh, we're going to get to the Super Chats, and then we have an interesting question in the Super Chats that we're going to get to. Uh, Tom A. with the $5 Super Chat says, The wisdom is to subvert men is strong. We all need to take notice. Venus flytraps ready to consume beef at the cost of cheddar. Very well said. Dory Dory just became a member. Appreciate that. C-Bub, $20. Women, women all despise each other deep down because Tony can't get what younger women have. She gives them garbage advice. Ride the CC because misery loves company. <laughs> She's the number 4,812 to never take relationship advice from women. This is 100% true. Old hoes know that young girls are their main competition. <laughs> and in order to bring their sexual market value down, they tell, well, I wish I would have slept around. You want to know something? This is going to work. Because now all these hoes that look up to uh, up to bitches like Cardi B and Meg the Stallion and Kim Kardashian and all that, and, and, and Trailer Swift and all that, oh, you know what? I don't want to be like Tony Braxton, 52, and regretful. I may as well fuck as many niggas as humanly possible, but deep down inside, they know it's wrong. They're just looking for a reason to misbehave. Dominic Ramos with the $10 Super Jet says, I agree 100% with that statement from earlier. If she's going to run around out here being a silicone fuck doll, then she's going to be my fuck doll too. That's exactly what Steve said. Uh, Caudenicus says, Manny said her JJ looks like an Arby's roast beef and cheddar. Techno <laughs> <laughs> Mage B5 with the $5 or $10 super chat. So speaking to Myron's point, it's good to know they can't manipulate you. Instant screening process. I'm going to go back. And this is a very basic Red Pill 101 question. Uh, shout out to Dennis Bryant with the $5 super chat. Now, I could I could beat Dennis up and say, this is a remedial question. This is supposed to be next level game. But there are a lot of guys who are watching us for the very first time. It's a very broad and general question. And uh, listen, let's go Red Pill 101. Let's go around the room and answer the question. I'm going to start with you, Solo. Why is it that women move this way? Why do they... Why are they moving the way Tony Braxton is moving? Why do women fuck everybody they can in their 20s and and and, and try to settle down in their 30s? Why do women move this way? Uh, mute, you're muted. Uh, it's very simple, Donovan. Alpha fucks, beta bucks, right? I mean, uh, when, when women are younger, they want to have fun. They want to live life, explore. So they deal with men that they're attracted to. They're dealing with the men that are, you know, the bad boys or, or the men that they really want. And then what happens is a, a lot of women, they become run, run through because they're not really locking these men down. Sometimes it could be for various reasons because they, they're dealing with men that don't want to be committed to them or the relationship goes left because the men realize those women are not worthy. They can't make eggs, y'all. Oh, make eggs. Oh, no, he he eggs. Steve, you know Steve, why do women move this way, man? Okay, I want to say first to the young man, don't worry about the why. Be her why, okay? Just remember that. Don't worry about what bitches say. Fuck what they think. But anyway, to answer the question is this. See, a lot of guys, y'all got to understand women. Y'all don't understand that women are looking to explore their bodies and understand their kink. 
everything that y'all watch on porn, every category that you see is a kink that a woman discovers about herself. They don't know they're 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 trying and it is not, I'm not making any excuses as they fuck, they fuck, but they're always trying to self-discover their bodies and their sexuality. And they're gonna do it by sucking dicks and having threesomes, like we men do it. And don't don't get it wrong, man. We do the same thing as men, but we just don't talk about that. But the yeah. reason why the reason why they do it is because they're exploring and learning their sexual boundaries. And the only way they're going to learn it is putting dicks in their mouths, dicks in their holes, <laughs> sucking fucking with eggs or not, and they're going to do their thing, man. <laughs> oh my God. Nice. Look, Mario, what are your thoughts on this, man? Well, the thing is, women do this because right. it's natural <laughs> for them to do it. This is, what, this is what I try to tell guys to understand. Women naturally are... They're, they're one of, they want to fuck. They want to have a lot of sex. They want to have... See, women, you got to understand, women can have like multiple orgasms, one eighth of a second, have all these orgasms. They, they can take a lot of dick. Women love to do this stuff. But what you got to understand is, is that guys just have to stop being naive about this and, and exactly. stop, making, stop yeah. making that the, the, <laughs> the end all be all to, to dealing with women. Because let's be honest, most dudes ain't, ain't going to be players out here. Most of <laughs> you guys ain't pumping and dumping. Most of you guys ain't just hitting it and quitting it. So some of you guys, as soon as you hit it, you want to wife the girl up and you want to get a girlfriend or whatever. So what I'm saying to y'all is, is that what's going to happen, I'm not even saying this might happen. I'm telling you, for most of y'all, this is going to happen. You're going to meet a girl. You're going to have sex with her. You're going to start liking her, right? Then you're going to find out that she has, she she banged a bunch of dudes. Then you're going to feel a certain type of way about it. Then you're going to move on to the next girl. You're going to have sex with her. You're going to start feeling her. You're going to find out she banged a whole bunch of guys. You see what I mean? So it's never going to end like that. Quest of trying to find the the, the pure girl is Holy it's real. impossible. You know what I'm saying? Real. So Holy accept real. the fact that you're dealing with women who like to make it happen and find other criteria to to mess with a girl if you want to mess with her long term. That's all. I'm, that's all I'm saying. Right. <laughs> Before I go to Myron, understand this. Uh, whoever asked that question, women are never not fucking. That's yeah. <laughs> they just ain't fucking you. Always <laughs> fucking. Don't let these bitches tell you otherwise. So, Myron, answer this remedial question. Why do women move like this? Yeah, and you know, this is an excellent question because we're getting a lot of new viewers and they're, you know, this is like new to them. And I'm, I always say it, bro, like the way the marketplace is now with so many guys like struggling with women, guys are becoming aware every single day. So, right. like, it's good to go back to the remedial sometimes. And what I'll say is this, bro. The, re the reality is this. Most chicks, when they meet you, they're banking on you being stupid and not knowing better. And what they're going to do is, depending on your knowledge of, you know, how women operate, everything like that, they're, like I said, they're going to put you in a category. And the reason why women move this way, bro, is because they know deep down their ability to lock and secure commitment from a man hinges on their ability to sell purity to the man so that guy is willing to give his – because here's the thing. Girls – Girls are always have like sex is an exchange. I hate to say it like that, but this is a thing. Yeah, it's transactional, dude. It's one hundred percent transactional. Because here's the thing: she gets your commitment, your resources, your time, your attention. We all know women love attention. Like that's like their crack. And for men, we want sex, right? So you trade your resources, time, attention, commitment, etc., for her sex because that's what men truly want. You know, any guy that's going to sit here and be like, "No, oh, I want her for a pr get the fuck out of here." You know what I'm saying? Like this is, you know, go somewhere else with that. But the point is is that men want that sexual commitment from one woman. And the reason why is because, let's keep it real, Every guy, what's every guy's nightmare? You raise a kid that you believe, find out later that isn't yours. That's and right. the only way to ensure, you know, again, Rolo talked about this all the time, shout out to him. The only way to ensure paternity is to know that the girl isn't promiscuous. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Obviously, we got, you know, uh, you know, so many different tools to test paternity nowadays and everything like that. But a woman's ability to lock down a high-value guy hinges upon her being able to successfully sell you her purity in exchange for some kind of commitment and resources. So this is why women have to move this way. It's why they got to move silently when they deal with a lot of guys. This is why they don't count their, they never count their, <laughs> their notches. You know what I'm saying? They only count the guys they actually had relationships with and they don't count the times they got drunk. They don't count the times they're in Miami. They don't count the times they're on boats partying with sultans and all this other crap. <laughs> <laughs> sultans. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, like they're not going to tell you like everything they've done, man. They're going to only tell you about the relationships because their ability, they, they know deep down that they can't really expose 
yeah. even chicks that are like porn stars and OnlyFans chicks are still going to try to sell you purity if they oh, see yeah, you. Yeah, right, right. Look, listen, I did porn for 10 years, but I only did porn with the men I loved. And that was... Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, they'll 100% fleece you if you let them, bro. So, like, that, that, that's, that's why they move that way because they know deep down they're not physically... They're not equipped to handle you physically. So how are they going to beat you cognitively, man? That's it. You know that's how they do it, man. That's what it is. All right, Jeff, uh, why do women move this way, man? Man, it's it's like this. Women, the prettier the woman, the easier it is for her to sell the illusion of the Damn. dream. Wow. Man. The dream. And a lot of brothers, a lot of guys, period, got to get this in their mind. Celibacy is not real and the dream is not real. Now, what I mean about the dream, the dream is what a lot of guys that ended up coming to the red pill is because they believed in the dream, which they believed that their girl was faithful. They believed that a girl had the ability to, you know what I'm saying, restrain herself and only devote her body and soul to you. Like, for instance, look at the movie uh, The Best Man. Oh, yes. Orange Chestnut was doing the world. You know, he was. You, he thought he can go out here, be, be a player, and still have this angelic, you know what I'm saying, a woman that he could come back to, find the Lord, and she'll be the queen. And she was there, and she never did him wrong or anything like that. Come to find out, she did a dick. And the dick that she was doing was your best fucking man. You know what I'm saying? So you guys got to open your mind, open your eyes up. The dream is not real. That angelic bitch, I've had a few of them. I'm like, man, she's a No, she was sucking dick. You know what I'm saying? She was doing all types of shit, vomiting at parties and shit, getting drunk with other niggas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you find out about this shit. You'll find out about her whole activities after you, you know what I'm saying, you, you break up and shit like that. But you guys got to start understanding that the dream that you guys are chasing isn't real because it's going to end up being a nightmare when you find <laughs> out the real reality of what that bitch was doing. And you see how Morris Chestnut reacted when he found out that his angel was really the devil and he was going to kill everybody and he still had to walk down the aisle and oh, find man. the Lord and find a way to accept the dicks that she did. See, a lot of this stuff, you kind of, a lot of you guys have got to get into the acceptance of your hoe, the acceptance of the dicks that you did. You know what I mean? And it's fucked up. You, you know, you coming to the table, you had a lot of, you had a lot of pussy that you went through and you're expecting to be this, you know what I'm saying, motherfucker who was fucking all these bitches and you, you really think that your girl's a virgin and it's just not real. It's not real. And you have got to change your mindset. I know my bitch has been banged. I know that my bitch, it, uh, it's not about how many motherfuckers she's fucking, it's who she's fucking now and who's got all the fucking control. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the, the that's just what you're gonna be dealing with. You're dealing with pre-fucked hoes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just it. Myron, what you got on this? <laughs> now, all I want to say is because I know we're probably gonna get some viewers in here, and they're gonna be like, "Oh my god, this is locker room talk. These guys are misogynists, everything like yeah. that." No. The reality is this, guys. We're not saying women that are promiscuous are bad people. We're not demonizing them anything. All we're doing is informing men to not be stupid. Because here's the reality. A lot of guys are going to commit to these girls thinking they're pure, believing these, these lies, etc. And all we're doing is telling them the truth. We're not saying it's bad that chicks are promiscuous or whatever like that. But women are 100% lying to a lot of guys that they deal with. And we're just here to inform them about the reality of, and how to move forward. Because a lot of guys buy a girl a ring, they commit to a woman, they buy her a home, they have children with her, and they don't know better. And then down the road, 10, 15, 20 years, they find out kids aren't theirs or she was having an affair or whatever. And where does this come from? Stupidity, not understanding how females really operate, how they may select, etc. So we're just informing guys on the reality so they can move accordingly because a lot of guys are brainwashed and buy into the purity when in reality, women are human too. They're not sugar and spice and everything nice like people tell you. Listen, women are neither good nor bad. And the reason why people call us misogynists is because they know we're telling the truth. They know that we are telling the truth about how women really are. So what they try to do is they attempt to marginalize us by saying they hate women. This is why they're saying bad things about them. No, we don't hate women at all. As a matter, as a matter of fact, I would say 
that person for person on this panel, we probably love women a lot more than the average man who doesn't know shit about women. <laughs> the reason why so many men hate women is because they do not understand them. You only come to love a woman when you fully understand her. Just like Jeb said, I know my girl used to be a hoe. Guess what? my girl, Dude, my girl, Devin, she used to be a hoe. Again, that doesn't make her a bad person. It makes her a woman. No, and not Devin! <laughs> no, no! Listen, man, like, like listen. The world is going to be crushed. Mm -hmm. I'm, man, I'm trying to tell you, and it's so funny because guys try to put these words, uh, guys try to put these words in my mouth. Uh, Jap, uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, talk to us a little bit more about, about, about men understanding and, and knowing that, hey, my woman used to be a hoe. Your expectations have got to get lowered. Flat out. You guys got high expectations for women. Women are to be treated like children and pets. I don't have high expectations for children, and I damn sure don't have high expectations for a fucking poodle. You have got to understand that these bitches are only going to move off their feelings. They're going to they they made tons of fucking mistakes. They need guidance. You know what I mean? And when you have these high expectations of thinking that this bitch's pussy has got to to it can't have any. She cannot have had a train ran on her. You know some of this shit you just don't want to know about. You know, like I tell guys, man, there's some deal breakers when a bitch time stamps her home that that's something that you may not be able to fuck with. If she time stamps her home which means she's on Pornhub, she has a fucking sex tape, oh, you know what I'm saying? So what I mean by time stamp, she could be 35, but we can still reflect on her 20s and see whole activity, she can never live it down. So I might not want to sign up for that, but all of these bitches have a track record of whole shit, you know? And it just depends on how severe it is and if it affects the future, the present day and the future. And, you know, if the bitch got diseases, no. If the bitch got a bunch of kids, which are diseases, no. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, um, you know Real quick, I'm going to say this real quick before we go, because we're going to go to Solo, then we're going to go to Myron, then we're going go to go to go to Steve. Ignorance is bliss, guys. You are never going to know all of the dick your woman is taking. You want to know something? That's a good thing. Now, a lot of people might say, well, no, I have to know so that I don't make a mistake. Listen, dude, listen, I'm trying to tell you, man, the most innocent looking girl has been fucked by more than one guy at one time. Guys, this is how it is. Like, this is how it is. Is that ideal? No. Right. Like it's not ideal. But guys, this is what you are dealing with. The reason I deal with my woman and my other women in a certain ways, because I understood exactly who and what they were. That doesn't mean you go asking, OK, how many guys did you sleep with? And did you do? No, you you need to assume the worst. And when it comes down to it, every woman is a hoe until proven otherwise. And even then, she's still probably a goddamn hoe. Assume uh, the worst. Dude, always assume the worst and you'll be in a much better spot. Uh, Solo, what you got, man? Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm going to say something, Donovan, that's going to hurt a lot of guys' feelings, right? So in, in the Red Bull community, there's a saying called, no hymen, no diamond, right? And you know what? I always laugh, and I know, Lakari, you're going to agree with me. Guess what? A lot of guys say, no, I'm not going to wife her if she has uh, over three body counts over two. Listen, my nigga, she probably has three body counts in a month, maybe even in a week, okay? She probably has three new bodies in a week. Right. And so when, in a day. when guys talk about, oh, you know, I'm only wifing up a virgin, unless you, you are um, dating a woman in some remote village that hasn't been discovered yet, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Where they're still going by traditional, uh, uh, you know, uh, patriarchy somewhere off some remote island in Bora Bora or some shit like that. You're not going <laughs> to find that. These 2020 chicks, um, all of them have bodies on them. Now, some some have more or less, but the reality is when I hear guys talk like that, oh, no hymen, no diamond, unless you're 16 or some shit like that, that shit is not realistic. Shit. So a lot of you guys still have this Disney uh, fantasy delusion that, you know, can you see the love to? Nah, nigga, cut that shit out. She been ran through. Just make sure she's clean and, and you know, she brushes her teeth before, you know, you kiss her. That's all I got to say. Hey, look, <laughs> Aaron, um, he's talking about the Lion King. Don't get it twisted. Nala absolutely fucks Scar before she fucks. <laughs> uh, yo, Aladdin, Aladdin would never have gotten Jasmine, bro. In a lot, like hey, Jafar was banging her, bro. Jafar, Jasmine, dude, Jafar, listen, check this out. Jasmine got ran through by Jafar and the fucking genie. Really? <laughs> that was the one time Will Smith actually won, bro. But I'll, I'll say. 
<laughs> but I'll say this, man. The main thing I, I just wanted to say, just to touch on, is like the reason why this information is so important for you guys is so that you're aware, so you don't put a gun in your mouth or a noose on your neck and do anything stupid. Because the thing is, is that men put themselves in, I don't want to say the words and get <laughs> the stream killed, but the point is guys put themselves in very bad positions because they're misinformed and they buy into that Disney narrative. Mm -hmm. So we're informing you guys so that you know down the road what to expect and just accept the reality, bro. When you accept the reality now, it's going to be a much harder pill. It's going to be a much easier pill to swallow than when after you walk down the aisle and you've committed to a woman that you thought she was something when she wasn't. You know what I'm saying? When you thought she was something that she wasn't. Yeah. But you thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. A little, little wordplay there. Uh, Lucario, what you got on this, man? Yeah, I just wanted to say that you got to, you guys got to understand that women, um, they're going to always put themselves in a certain position so they're so that they're advertising that they are what they're trying to portray themselves to be. Yes. So, for example, if you go on any, just go. You can do this tonight after the show. Go on your Instagram, look at the women that you follow. This could be girls you know. This could be girls you don't know. Whatever, but just look at all the pictures that that uh, look at their profile. Look at everything. You'll notice you'll hardly see any men in their pictures. All right. You understand what I'm saying? But most of them have boyfriends or they have guys that they're fucking and all other stuff. But they can't advertise that because just in case they catch you and they want to take advantage of you and make you wipe them up, you feel what I'm saying? They're like, like Jap was saying, you, they were saying that there's, some women have evidence of them being with a bunch of dudes and women have smartened up. They say, you know what? Let me not take any pictures with these guys and post them up. <laughs> so there's, there's no evidence that I'm that type of girl. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they're definitely doing this stuff. So this is what you guys are going to understand is that they're they're on purpose doing this 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 type of craziness. I'll tell I'll tell you guys something about uh you know personally like so for example like y'all know me and my wife is in an open relationship right so when me and my wife walk down the street and, and hang out we we'll hold hands and all that right but she told me and this is the funny part and and I've seen this craziness happen she told me that with other guys that she'll mess with she won't hold their hands in the street. Not because out of respect for me or anything, but because she told me that she 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 feels this subconscious feeling of not wanting other guys out there to see her holding hands with another yeah. guy because that makes her look unavailable. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So, yes. so this, is, this is what I'm saying. This is what women do, and so she's she's and she's conscious that she's doing that. But a lot of women will do this even on a subconscious level of trying to put that out there that they are available. To, to other men, but also they have no other guys they're dealing with because that's the marketing scheme for women. You see what I'm saying? Good. Twitch girls, real quick, Twitch girls, girls only fans, any girl that does porn, whatever, they will never post pictures of themselves nope. with their boyfriend, their husband, none of that because women know innately that they need to sell purity and I am single and I am yours to be able to sell that fantasy. Because right. like a lot of these girls, what they're selling, these only fans, chicks, these strippers, these uh, models, whatever it may be, they're selling purity and oh daddy i'm here for you whatever and then what do most suckers do oh my god i'm getting attention from a hot girl she says i'm the one oh blah, blah, blah. and then boom they're cashing out like big time so for their business to work they need to sell purity and not show any type of companionship with another guy like lucario is on the money with that right. i'm gonna tell you this, uh, one thing about it with the uh with the black chicks they always selling this image of being a wifey you don't hear a lot of white women mexican women say oh i'm wifey material i'm wifey material that's because they know that they're hoes already. You know, when you hear somebody say, I'm I'm wifey, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that's bullshit. That's an automatic wifey and celibacy. That's it already let you know. Oh, you're Jesus. Getting, pussy. You're getting the pussy. I've been celibate for three years. Oh slag me in. You're slag me in tonight. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, that's what's going on in the urban community. This wifey thing, which is an illusion, which is a dream. No, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and celibacy, get the fuck out of here. The, no, bitch, no. the bitch got a vibrator in her purse right now, nigga. Not you, know, you know, let, let, let's let's be all let, let, let's keep things all the way a billion with a lot of you guys that's listening. Right. Talking about women whoring and all that other shit. Let's keep shit one thousand. You motherfuckers are so busy barbershop bitching, and you guys would you don't got the balls to ask a woman how many guys she slept with because most of you guys don't have the balls to even approach these fucking women. You mm. watch these women go by every damn day Johnny at the Marshall. gym, on the street. Everywhere you go, you so scared of the fucking bitch, you ain't even man enough to even go up and talk to the bitch, more or less ask her how many guys she slept with. And another thing I want to say to y'all guys that's listening out there to be real with y'all, you got a choice. 
are you going to be the one that's going to be her money bag or are you going to be the one in her bed? Because when you were in her motherfucking bed, don't get it twisted. Because when you got the game, and watch all these motherfuckers gonna laugh on this panel. When you laying in the bed and her fucking phone ring and it's you calling, she'll be like, hold on, be quiet real quick. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, I wanna go eat there. Yeah, I wanna go to that place. Oh, that's great. Well, baby, let me go back and suck your dick a little bit more before I go out and eat that food. That's what I'm saying to y'all. Y'all gonna, hey, y'all wanna be about that life? But don't sit around and act like you worried about her count. There it you is. You ain't even talking to the bitch. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very, very well said. You're uh, not prepared to talk to a, dick, a bitch with dick breath. <laughs> <laughs> this is the game. This is harsh. <laughs> All right. There we go. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, very, very good. Uh, yeah. Darker, uh, Dorky Dory uh, with the $35 super chat says, big ups to you, Donovan. You and a few other YouTubers, including Better Bachelor, have helped me so much in learning about what's going on. In the dating and women world, love your channel and listen frequently. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Dorky Dory with another $15 super chat says, Also, it's amazing to listen to so many awesome men coming together to talk about the things you all are. Thank you all for your input and knowledge. This is a very good question by Nonstop Dre360. We're going to come back to it in just a second uh, because we have some more super chats, but we're going to, I'm going to ask this now. What percentage of men do you all think are red pill aware now can, compared to five years ago? What do you all think the percentage will be five years from now? Okay. Well, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, Tom, a $10 super chat says touchy feely is a, is a technique for women to make men appear unavailable in public. If a woman is not giving these physical indicators when you are with her, then you should check out every other woman in sight. That is next level game, of course. That'll make her mad. Unique 79 with the five British pounds says, don't forget the possible pattern, gentlemen, which is a lot of these women will suddenly start going to church to find in <laughs> redemption. I love it. Listen, they're always hoes in church, right? Eugene Morgan, $10 Super Chat says, we can't call women good or bad, but we can certainly say they're adversarial. And I got that term directly from Rolo. They sell a pipe dream of purity and other lies. I don't give a shit if you got it from Rolo or not. Women are neither good nor bad. Sometimes they're adversarial. Sometimes they're not. But women, I'm not saying that there are no bad women out there. But we have to understand that women, they're like water. Okay? They take the shape of the container that they're put in. If they were in a masculine container, if it were a patriarchy, women be, would be much better behaved. But because we face the possibility of maybe having Kamala Harris in the White House when Joe Biden kicks the bucket in a couple of years, that's going to be a bizarre world. Um, I respectfully, partially disagree. Christian Madio with the $10 Super Chat says, loving the content, dropping the good knowledge. What do you guys suggest guys going through red pill rage? Also, does red pill rage stem from not knowing a woman's nature? We answered that earlier. Yes, men are angry with women because they do not understand them. As far as red pill rage is concerned, continue to consume red pill truth. The more you understand women, the less angry you are at them. Original D with the $20 Super Chat says, don't forget breaking the rules. Wake up, everyone, fellas. We just need to build everything else based on personal agenda. Uh, takes the trunk, okay? Uh, Technomage V5 says, all the reality you create starts with a dream. Just don't buy false dreams. Other pedal, others pedal. Shane Cookson Travels with the 20 euros says, this German chick I hit with an Asian kid spoke PJ with a fluency, tried to befriend me after a one-night stand, then dropped the act. She kept showing me, she kept showing up outside my place. Why care to explain? We need a little bit more detail than that. Uh, if we're going to answer that question, let's go to, well, wait a minute. The, uh, Theo WAF $25 says I got married, found out that she was still with men all six years, divorce, and then red pill after recovery and Rolo over $300,000 a year yearly. And no women in my life don't have time for hoes. Very good. Let's answer this question. Cause I think this one is very, very thought provoking as we round third and head for home. So, Nonstop Dre 360 uh, wanted to know what percentage of men do you think are red pill aware as compared to five years ago? And what do you think the percentage will be five years from now? Myron, I'm going to come to you with this one because, again, you're actually out here in these streets. What are your thoughts on red pill awareness then, now, and in the future? Man, I I'll say this, like, Almost nobody is yeah. aware. Like when I'm, I'm actually like, I'm very, I, I got lucky. I, I'm shout out to my boy, Fresh Prince CEO. He's aware and his roommate. And we like go out and we talk to chicks. Like today we're out yes. filming content, like approaching women. Yeah. And that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, so he's aware, but like the thing is, bro, like I had to find a needle in a haystack. Shout out to Solo for hooking us up. But the thing is, is that most guys have no clue, man. Like most dudes are simps. Here's the other thing. I'm 30 years old, man. I just turned 30. 
guys in my age demographic are soft, like yep. really soft. Like they're, they're pussies, man. Like it's, they don't work out. They're soft. They like, like they think it's okay to be sensitive in front of women and to show weakness and all this other fucking loser shit. And it's like, no, bro, it's actually repellent. But the thing is, is that it's politically incorrect to say stuff like, yo, don't let a woman lead, or you got to, you got to be the masculine one, or you don't listen to, you know, you don't give her, tell her your problems. You got to hold that shit in and be the rock. You know what I Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah, I got to be nice and sensitive. Like, nah, bro. That's why you're taking L's with girls left and right. So right now, I would say m- maybe less than 5% of the male population is RP aware. And then I'm going to say even less of them are actually applying the principles. Because I'm going to keep real. A lot of you guys just watch this content. And you guys are red pill masturbators. You don't approach girls. You don't deal with girls. You don't talk to girls. And you guys like, or, or some of you guys are like, oh, I'm just scared. Or you guys will say the false rape crap. Or you'll use some other cockamania excuse. Yeah, yeah. Calling. Calling when me and Lacari are live at 2 a.m. saying some bullshit. So, like, a lot of guys aren't even applying it. So, like, some guys might know, but they're still simping on the side. So, I would say, like, man, like, maybe 1% to 2% of men are actually applying this stuff. But I do say – I will say this. I feel in the future, in the next five years, more and more guys are going to become aware. Because, like, even the young boys on Twitch, they're getting aware. They're using terms like simps, et cetera. The, the internet is, like, kind of exposing men to this stuff. But, I mean, it's still – we're still a long ways away. There's way too many simps out here, man. It's bad. <laughs> Uh, Solo, what are your thoughts? Uh, what percentage of men today are red pill compared to yesteryear? Where do you see this uh, thing five years from now? Uh, I'll be honest with you, Donovan. I'm not able to quantify that um, because of the fact that, um, you know, it's I, I don't speak to every man or every guy. Right. But there are a lot of guys that are still blue pill. But what surprised me, Donovan, I, I recently had a conversation with one of the YouTube legends, um, Black Ram 313, you guys probably oh, are familiar with him. Where's he been? Oh, he's he's still here. He's still around. He's He does a red pill show with uh, Male Enlightenment TV Sunday afternoons at 3 p.m. Um, they alternate. But um, one of the things Black Ram told me one time is, hey, I was going to one of my side chicks' house, and then I, was, I heard your voice. And I'm like, wait, you heard my voice? He's like, yeah. I, I started freaking out. Well, come to find out, Donovan, the, the the side chick had, I guess, some friends over, and they were watching one of my fucking YouTube videos, bro. Oh. And he couldn't believe it. He was floored. And so the reality is this knowledge is spreading. You'd be surprised how many people come up and say, hey, do you watch the guy Sam? Just reverse the letter backwards. You know what I'm talking about. And Or do you watch even you, Donovan? You know what I mean? And I remember one time I was with a photographer, and he's like, bro, you got to read this book. It's changed my life. And then Donovan, he showed me a, a copy of The Rational Mail. And wow. so wow. the knowledge is coming out there. Everyday guys are becoming aware. Even guys that I talk to that, you know, they show me like a friend, friends of mine or, or friends of friends, you know, social circle. They watch these con- this content that we have and it, it blows my mind. So I'm glad um, Cats ain't found Lucario yet. Some of them. Well, most of them have. <laughs> because then they'll start saying, yo, this guy sounds like you. Or are you trying to sound like him? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah they, they, you listen. They accuse me of trying to be you, and then later they accuse you of trying to be me. And by the way, Donald, <laughs> I just got one thing to add to Solo real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, wait, wait, real quick. Oh, I just want to finish one last thing. Yeah, go ahead, Solo. My bad. Um, but I do think uh, Donovan, it's increasing, but I don't know at what rate. So. Okay. Well, uh, you said it, it's very, very hard to quantify. Uh, before I go to uh, Lakari here, uh, what do you have, uh, uh, Byron? All I want to say, just to add to Solo's point, because I agree with him 100%, as feminism gets stronger and women become more and more liberated and they become you know, more and more promiscuous and it's more accepted, et cetera, and you know, the dating market becomes more and more skewed in female favor and more guys are getting frustrated, more and more guys are going to find, find the pill. You know what I mean? Like as, as less and less guys are able to get sexual access – you're gonna. I, I think more and more guys are gonna figure out like, oh wow, like hypergamy, all this other stuff. Yeah. So I think it's a matter of time as as the sexual marketplace gets harder for the average guy. More people are gonna wake up. Not only that, men mm. are. We are solutions oriented. Yes, men are soft and weak today. But guess what? When there is a problem, most men don't sit around and bitch about it. A lot more men than women will say, okay. Here is the problem. How do I get laid? And that's eventually how they find the red pill. Mm. You know, so 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 Solo says that he can't quantify the. Mm. And I agree with him, but mm. if you had to take a stab at it. Mm. Okay, see, this is the thing. I, I think it's like less than 1% of people <laughs> that, that are aware of all of this stuff because dudes are still talking about being on your purpose. And if you got a lot yeah. of money, then you'll get girls. Or, you. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they're talking about trying to find a woman with a low body count. I'm like, bro, if you're not, if you're not really 
down with reality and, and understanding what's really going on, then you're just going to be stuck in, 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 in the situation. And, and unfortunately, a lot of guys nowadays are not masculine. There's too many guys who are soft and bitch made. So they gravitate to things that, cause like a lot of the, the red pill content, it, it's, you know, it's not like soft stuff. It's not things that's going to make you feel good. So they want the things that's going to make you feel good. You see what I'm saying? And so this is why a lot of people don't gravitate to certain information because instead of actually being better, they just want to feel better. And feeling better isn't always the thing that's going to make you be better. So a lot of these dudes, they 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 they, they hear it, it's going through one ear right out the other. They're not actually taking heed to the information. You know what I'm saying? Good stuff. Steve. Yeah, you- I got something to say about this bullshit. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I, hey, zero, I'm going to say negative 100. <laughs> I'm going to say negative 100. See, 20 years ago, I was in this game when the PUAs were talking about wearing makeup, boas, eyeliner, and, no, and, and, go- right. and goggles. And a lot of y'all guys will understand that it's going on right now. It's not the goggles and eyeliner. It's a lot of motherfuckers out there that have no game, that all they do is teach you how to be more of a bitch than a man. They want to teach you how to complain than salute, be, be solution-based. See, the young man said he's worried about other men. You ain't going to make it because you shouldn't be worried about other men. And Theo is the Theo guy that Theo WF is a prime example of a man that's not taking accountability for the fact that his woman ran over his motherfucking ass. This is what I'm talking about. See, a lot of y'all guys are so busy, like LaCar said, blaming women, mimicking. You're following a bunch of guys that are just saying the same things over and over again. Listen to your language. Y'all, instead of saying women, y'all say stupid shit like plates and saucers and cups and bowls and all this other shit. You don't talk like men. You don't think like men. Y'all want to be metal. Go your own way. Like uh, LaCar said, you want to be on your fucking purpose and shit, but you never make your purpose yourself. That's why y'all ain't going to make it because, like I say, y'all right now, you listen to motherfuckers tell you not to even jerk off. So in five years, Donovan, <laughs> they're going to be like suck a dick to be a man. I promise you, it's going to go. It's going to go from stop jerking off to sucking a dick in five years. I bet you. That that's gonna be a different video, Steve. Because <laughs> <laughs> on that topic, bro. Congratulations to Dean Williams for officially putting the video on Patreon. Oh shit. <laughs> nah, keep that's it, 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 keep it up. Right here. <laughs> up on YouTube. Uh Jeff, what are your thoughts on the amount of men who have this kind of awareness? Now I'm I'm noticing I'm seeing it grow. Uh I'm seeing a lot of people um gravitating towards it because of the fact that now a lot of secrets that were secrets before are not secrets bef- uh, to this degree now. Like what I mean is before you never knew women, women weren't shit, but now you have songs like uh wet ass pussy, WAP for whatever the hell. Yeah, like, whatever. You're starting to see open thought shit and guys are starting to realize like, damn, the woman that I thought was an angel really wants to be this. So guys starting to see and gravitate towards this, this information more. The problem is they 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 become uh, this becomes like a hobby and this becomes something that they like to do just for to watch for entertainment because they they're scared to actually apply what being a red pill man uh, entails like what Myra said they're not gonna work out you know what I'm saying but they like to watch it for entertainment oh man I get to talk about bitches and hide my face behind this <laughs> avatar and say yeah fuck this bitch you know what I'm <laughs> but when they go out in the real world. You know they're comfortable still being a simp, but they <laughs> secretly be red pill, and because they don't have to actually put in the work, they don't want to go high <laughs> bitches in real life. They don't want to get in the field and do what it really takes to get laid. You know what I mean? So they only need to take what comes their way. I'm starting to see a lot more people, though, even stars, starting to gravitate towards this red pill energy. Like for instance, uh, I believe it was Twenty One Savage. He put out a he put out a tweet and he said, "Women don't build with men; they just want to move in." Right. Fact. So um, it's like, okay, now you got these trick ass rappers who used to make it rain on bitches. Now they're starting to wake up because <laughs> everybody's starting to realize what I always said: these bitches ain't shit. Thank when you. you. Just, when you can just hone into that. Your whole approach to life will change. Th- those words changed my life. When yeah. I realized that, that these bitches ain't shit and that I meant it. Yes. You know, not just to say it sound good, 
but really mean it the way I treat her, the way I approach her, the way I don't need her, the way I make her expendable, change my life for the better. See, a lot of these guys, I need to build with the bitch. And, man, you know, I need to <laughs> build with all that bitch made shit. You supposed to be a man, and that's why she don't fucking respect you. So I see a lot of guys coming over here because I'm looking at the numbers. We growing. But the only problem is when we got 2,000 motherfuckers in the chat, are 2,000 men going to get out here, take the fucking avatar off your fucking screen name, show no. your face, get out here and put your feet on the pavement and get at that bitch directly? <laughs> are you going to really do this shit? Or you want to sit around in chat rooms for eight hours talking about this, this and that about the bitch and the theories of the bitch, but are you going to really put it into work and get the bitch? Ooh, wow. That is, yes. Wow. Yes. Uh, yes. I would, like to, I would like to declare the winner of... Jeff. Chapsap for to, the chef's hat for tonight is the minister jab. Minister yeah. Jap. I'm on pre workout. That's the only reason why I'm this hype right now. <laughs> Listen, Minister Jap was cooked. Dude, he cooked everybody. He cooked all the hoes, man. Especially them old. What really won that for you was when you're talking about that 53 year old hoe wedding. Oh, like man. that's what that was. Uh, we got one more thing from uh, Meyer, and then we'll read up the uh, then we'll read up the uh, super chats and close the show. What you got, man? Yo, I know exactly that tweet that uh, Jap was talking about, and yo, I quote that all the time because here's the thing about rappers. Rappers inevitably get hit with the red pill because a lot of them are street dudes. They weren't getting chicks before. Nothing changed except they get a hit record and now all of a sudden now chicks want to jump on them. Girls they never would have thought wanted them. You know, blonde baddies, you know, foreigns, all this other stuff want them. That's why rappers talk so much about, I got the foreign. They talk so much about women because they never had it before. So they inevitably get the red pill because they see the the, the, the the not so friendly side of hypergamy. They see that like, oh, this chick only wants me because of who I am and like the money I make and my celebrity. That's why a lot of these rappers treat women terrible. Future, Trey Songs, uh, what, you know all these guys like treat women like crap, bro. Like they leave them out in the middle of nowhere. They kick them out the hotel. That's why like Selena Powell, she did an actual a YouTube video and she was teaching girls how to like slide into rappers DMs. One of the things she said was if you show up, if you DM a rapper and you show up at his place, you better be about it because if you don't, they're going to kick you out the hotel. And I was like, yup. Like, that's how they operate now because it was so hard for them to get chicks when they were broke and dirty and dusty so that when they get the money, they're, they're, they can't respect the chicks anymore. They can't because they couldn't get them before. And then they're seeing like, oh, they only like me because of my money. So that's why you treat them like crap. And Trey Songs like to give golden right, showers. See, hey, no, no, no hands, you. baby. No hands, baby. <laughs> um, all right, uh, Charles M uh, with the $10 super sticker. Appreciate that. Uh, Ryan Washington, $2, says Black Kings Unite. Uh, Uber Colt says, is it normal to be in red pill rage for eight months? No, it is not normal to be in red pill rage for eight months. Would you like to know why? Minister Jeff just told you why. Because you sit around and you, and you red pill masturbate. Listen, get off your ass. Quit. Listen, watch us, but get off your ass. Hit the fucking gym and start talking to girls. You'll get out of red pill rage real quick. Uh, Sheldon Ross, five dollars. His guys are definitely waking up though. Every day, more and more guys are getting red pilled and mig towed. Yeah. Uh, LOL. When you have women complaining, you know it's working. That's very, very true. Listen, red, I'm not bringing in the whole mig tow thing. I'm not getting into that. I'm, red pill com completes the umbrella. So enough of this. Enough of that nonsense. Whoa. Uh, uh, how about them Cowboys? Steve John Brown with the five dollars super chat. Is it going? to be dress or tights that donovan will be wearing a onesie on oh. LOL, all love <laughs> hey, donovan you know what we're talking about and it's that bet it's, it's the bet, that bet. No, man so yeah yeah we're definitely gonna have to do that a one onesie day. yes he'll yes. be wearing a onesie a onesie yes uh, a onesie. <laughs> with, i will wear it with pride uh goat <laughs> uh tom a with the 20 dollars super chat says even if men do not use the knowledge they will understand why things are the way they are the, uh, this will lead to a less domestic v wor world because men are lo uh, <clears throat> logicians. Never heard of that word before. The the knowledge gives power and less rage to create better outcomes. Holy moly! Uh, Novi two thousand with the ten dollars super chat says, "Great energy on the show, loving it. Don't hate women, understand them, and act accordingly." Uh, Tyrone and sales with the ten dollars super sticker. Shane cooks and travel another um uh, another uh what's that twenty euros? This is not sure if this counts as needing more. But she was DTF the day we met, and she paid for everything we both drank, then came to my place after making out with me in front of a friend that I actually hit on first. 
uh, uh, listen, man, if she's making out with you in front of your friends, she is definitely down to fuck. I think if you didn't fuck her, it's probably because you didn't push the action forward. Don't be afraid next time. Eddie Daniels, $5 super chat says, all guys have to do is stop giving out free attention. She gets attention when she deserves it. Very good. Yes, that's the way to bring the price of cars down. Quit paying fucking $50,000 for a car and you won't be paying $50,000 for her. Matthew Drescher, $100 super chat. It said, if blue pill men have red pilled men around them, these men will be there to explain things to them when the pain of staying blue pill becomes greater than taking the red pill. I have a friend like this. He thinks he's got a unicorn, but I see the red flags. I appreciate the super chat, but I partially disagree. The red pill only is digested to men who seek it out. You cannot evangelize Next. the red pill. Even if your friend goes, even if your friend goes down in flames, you can't say, well, the reason why she cheated on you is because of hypergamy. No. If he asks you, hey, Donovan, you seem to be kicking lives. Ask, what's your secret of Donovan? I read this article on Return of Kings. Tell me more about that. You cannot evangelize the red pill. Good luck to yeah. your friend. He'll, your friend will fight you. To, oh, to dude, prove that. Like, he'll fist fight you for that. Yeah, yeah. Like, like dude, men are so men are so self-invested in blue pill. That's why they have to nice. seek out. Red Pill Mike with the $100 Super Chat says, I love women, but I hate feminism, plain and simple. Women who commit early then wish they had been hoes watch their man's value increase while failing to maintain her own without understanding that a hoes value crashes at a faster rate. Relationship market value despair is a true hoe. Well, that's the comment of the night right there. With that, that is going to do it for this edition of The 7 Excellent Show. We're going to go around the panel one last time uh, for everyone to give their closing salvos. We're going to lead off with Solo TV 84. What you got? Unmute yourself. See, I got to get back into the habit of uh, unmuting myself. Thanks, Donovan. But I want guys to understand that the reality is this. We, we are here to give you guys information on, on female nature, on how to deal with women. We're not here to spread negativity or hate. We're just giving you guys the truth. And for some guys, that's a bit of pill to swallow, Donovan. And we get it. We get it. The reality is some people are going to listen to this and they're going to cry and they'll probably call Donovan or make a video. Right, Donovan? You always got these thoughts making videos. About <laughs> and they're going to make a video. Wah, wah, wah. But the reality is this. There's a lot of truth here. And the most important part is for you guys to take action. OK, take action. Take action. Go out there. Be the man that you want to be. Stop being one of these fictionary guys on a Saturday night doing eight hour live streams, okay? That is whack, that is corny. Go out there, live your best life. I know right now we're in a pandemic era, but there's still things you can do to you know, improve your situation and also improve with women. Also, you can follow me at Solo TV 84 on YouTube and Instagram. That's all I gotta say. Excellent, very, very well put. Myron, fire away. Yo, so guys, uh, I have a show that I do on Mondays at 1 p.m. and a show on Thursdays at 6 p.m. The Monday show is called The Gains Podcast, and the Thursday show is called The Fresh and Fit Podcast with my boy Fresh Prince CEO. We do it at 6 p.m. Tomorrow on Monday, I'm going to have Alan Roger Curry, oh. aka Mode 1, on my show at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time live. We're going to talk about Mode 1, marrying up the old school with the new school because I'm a big believer in no free attention 2020. So we're going to, you know, we're going to bring the two together and we're going to, we're going to chop it up about game on how to deal with chicks uh, in today's age. And, no. and Alan Roger Curry started that shit. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. So, Facts. so, you know, I got to, I got to pay some respects and bring him on the show. It's going to be a good one, man. 1 p.m. Hey, tomorrow. Man, man, tell Alan, listen, tell Alan to get at me, man. I've been texting him for like four weeks. He hasn't gotten at me. I don't know if there's uh, I I don't know if there's a, uh, I'll hit him up. Yeah. Hit him up, man. Let's yeah. I'll hit him up for sure. Dave, what you got, brother? Guys, go to the manmindset.com, uh, guys, for all the all the stuff that you need. I just want to say to y'all guys out there, love the chat room. Thank you for the guys that's on the panel. But guys, y'all got to understand that the depth of these men are some of the, have, have the mindset that is deeper than a lot of y'all can even consciously think about. So some of the information that you're listening to, it's going to be, a hard, like they say, a hard pill to swallow. But you've got to accept the fact that we're not about what could be. We're about what is. So... We're saying to you guys is eat the meat and spit out the bones. If there's something that you don't like, it's your fault that you don't like that shit because we fine because we're success. And it's not being mean, but we're trying to get your asses over to our side. So stop worrying about the next motherfucking man and start worrying about your goddamn self. Thank you, man. Very well said. Lucario, what you got, man? If I can get him on the screen. where the Oh, where did he go? He said his computer froze. Oh, that sucks. Okay. All right. Uh, then let's go to let's go to Jeff. What you got, man? 
Hey, man, it's an honor and a pleasure for you to have me on the show, man. Shout out to Donovan. Shout out to all the brothers on the panel because everybody on here got legitimate platforms and we all putting in the work. I want to say this. We have simp so you don't have to. <laughs> we, we got all of this based off of experience. And yes. like, if you want to go through things the hard way, then try it your way. But you're listening to guys who really have experience, who really, really, really been in the field. That's why I tell you guys all the time, field work is real work. Yeah. And, um, you guys get a chance, go subscribe to my channel, Minister Jab Live. Um, I also got a secondary channel, Minister, J Minister Jab's Church. And I will be, uh, like I told Donovan, we got the uh, we got the set we're building right now. I'm going to be getting back to those sermons that you guys have always been wanting. So always follow me on uh, 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 Instagram at this is Jappa. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to be collabing with each one of these guys on the panel really soon. I'm ready to work. Thank God, you guys. You know what me I'm saying? Me and Jeff me and Jeff I'm, I'm, I'm so focused right now. Let's get it, though. Got to be focused. Uh, Eddie Daniels with the $5 Super Chat says, all guys have to do is stop giving out free attention. She gets attention when she deserves it. Let's use proper English. Eddie Daniels says, guys are also hypergamous. If I was dating a seven, it would not be hard to upgrade to a nine. Well, Eddie, you're wrong. You're, you're wrong on both fronts. Number one, men are not hypergamous. There's no such thing as hypogamy. Women can only date men that they are superior to. Women consolidate on the highest value men available to them. Which goes to the second point. You said if you were dating a seven, it would not be hard to upgrade to a nine. Then why not date the nine in the first place, Eddie? Let's listen. Okay. Listen, listen. I appreciate the super chat, but men and women are different. Okay. Yes, we do have some similarities, but there is no such thing as hypogamy. Men, we you like to get out there and date. That this is clearly a guy that, like, bro, when you deal with bad chicks, then you'll understand what it, what we're talking about here, bro. Like, chicks don't date now, bro. <laughs> Win it any better. I don't want to hear guys do it too. I, I got no time for that. Appreciate yeah. the super chat though. Then C five dollar super chat says great show, guys. Appreciate that. And then Matthew Drescher, the new member, Black Wolf Inc. Five dollars. Uh Caldenicus says there is a reason why these guys are coaches. They will teach you how to run the race, but you have to run it. Facts. Very, very nice. Very, very well said. Um, okay. Oh, wait, uh Lucario's back. back on. Yeah, Lucario's back yeah. on. Okay, Lucario, uh, what do you have <laughs> on your closing salvo, my friend? Go ahead. Yeah, basically, hold on, let me close this shit. Yeah, basically, I just, you know, guys, you guys just need to understand that, you know, yes! they got they got to get to the reality of of this game, of this whole situation. Understand, women are going to be out there doing what they do. You need to focus on what you do, and when you deal with women, just deal with them accordingly. Deal with them how you feel is going to be best beneficial for you, and that's 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 all it is. You understand what I'm saying? That's all it is at the end of the day. So when when that, that'll save you a lot of heartache, a lot of energy, extended energy, a lot of time, just accepting that women are how they are, and then you just have to deal with them how you see fit to deal with them. That's it. Boom. Fact. Very, very well said. Mm -hmm. uh, Moses A. with the $5 stupid chat says, many men are red pill aware, but only a tiny fraction know how deep the rabbit hole really goes. This, These are the men that I affectionately call five percenters. Uh, gentlemen, fantastic show. This is definitely yes, sure. the this best excellent. here. Um so again, guys, like, comment, subscribe, share, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we appreciate all of your support very much. Uh, we will be back here <clears throat> next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Mm. Uh, real quick announcement. Real quick announcement. All of my courses that were deplatformed by Teachable are now available. Go to DonovanSharp.com or go to Patreon.com slash DonovanSharp, and you will have access to all of my courses. Womanese Volume 2 is available right now, but it's not going to be available forever. It's going to be available until Thursday. You understand? So if you got a re if, if you got a refund from Woman's Volume Two and you want to purchase it again, you guys know exactly where to find it. And yes, we know which one of you got refunds and which one of you didn't. Don't come at me. Don't 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 get a six hundred ninety seven dollar refund. Then hit me with Donovan. I didn't get a refund. Where's my no? We know exactly <laughs> who got refunds and exactly which ones don't, and we will treat you accordingly. But uh, we greatly greatly appreciate the support. Again, join us next next week. Same bet.